everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So today is November 1st and I have quite the stacked November TBR. So I thought I would start the month off with just kind of a casual, cozy weekly reading vlog as I attempt to tackle that TBR. So I have started one book that I am very, very excited about and I'm not sure what other books I'll be reading in this, but let's just get started with this one because I have a lot to say about it and I am so, so excited. So the first book that I'll be reading in this vlog is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is the same author as The Daughter of No World, which is a book that I read last month. Absolutely loved, obsessed, another adult fantasy romance. This is a vampire adult fantasy romance, which is super, super fun. And I gotta say, I'm already loving it. It's already feeling like a five star. I am so, so obsessed with this book so far. This book follows Aurea. Aurea is a human, but she was adopted by a vampire king when she was very, very young. So she was raised in this vampire realm. Her whole life, her father has trained her to kind of be a warrior and protect herself because even though she is the daughter of the vampire king, vampires have bloodlust, they still want to go after her, they still want to kill her. She has to be very tough and very skilled in order to survive. So the main plot of this book is Aurea decides that she wants to participate in a very dangerous vampire tournament to the death because the prize for this tournament is you get one wish granted by the goddess Nyaxia. And Nyaxia is like the goddess and mother of all vampires and the winner of this tournament, the last person standing, gets whatever they want from her. So Aurea does want to participate in this tournament because even though it's very dangerous and the odds are stacked against her, she kind of feels like she has nothing to lose because her life, while she does love her dad and, you know, she's happy for the life that she has lived, it's not very full because there's only so much that she can do. So she thinks that if she wins this tournament, she can ask goddess Nyaxia to grant her this wish and it will help her keep her humanity, but also keep her safe. So that is kind of her whole goal and objective. And her dad, although he knows that it's very dangerous, he also kind of sees the writing on the wall that this is probably her only shot at living a normal life and being protected because he can only do so much. So I'm about 120 pages in to this book and I'm obsessed. I, Krista Broadbent, I love you. Like I am so in love with this book. So I don't want to compare this to Daughter of No Worlds too much just yet. I am thinking once I have read the final book in Daughter of No Worlds, because then I will have read all of her books thus far, I think. I think she only has four books, but I do think I might do like a guide to Carissa Broadbent and just like talk about her books, maybe in a video next month, just because she is one of the only fantasy romance authors that I've read from that have consistently put out really, really good books that I've connected to, that I really loved, and that I 100% recommend. So I'm not gonna talk about the two series very much right now because I would do that in that video, but I will just say you can definitely see the growth in writing in this book as it is her latest release. The writing in the other series is fantastic, by the way, like there's nothing wrong with it, but just, you know, naturally over time, an author is going to progress and their writing is going to get better. And you can see that here. It has matured a little bit. The series has a darkness and a grittiness that I really appreciate and I really connect to and the love interest. Okay, so the love interest in this book, his name is Rain. He is a very big, bad, scary vampire. And, um, oh, by the way, all of the vampires have wings in this world, which is very fun. Some of them are like leathery wings, like the Bat Boys, and then others have like feathery wings, kind of like angels, which is interesting. The main character kind of reminded me of Hunt in the way that he's described, but he has black and like, deep burgundy feathered wings and he's very tall, huge brooding, of course. And it seems like every other vampire hates him and fears him. And he's kind of just this very morally gray. Honestly, everyone in this book is morally gray, including our main character. But Rain is just like, yep, I'm, I'm obsessed with him. I think that their kind of romance trope is gonna be like villain gets the girl, enemies to lovers type of situation because we have met Rain, Aurea has met him. And I mean, as soon as she meets him, she stabs him. So love that, we're off to a great start. And they've just had very good banter so far and it is slow burn, but it's not a slow burn as Daughter of No Worlds, I will say. So I'm really liking the progression of this romance so far and I'm excited to see where it goes. Rain is kind of curious about Aurea. She is a human competing against a bunch of vampires. So as I said, the odds are stacked against her, but he's very curious about her and kind of has his own self-interest at heart too, but I think he's also into her. Like, I don't know. I'm excited to see how their relationship plays out and how they get from where they are now to an eventual romance because, I mean, they're supposed to kill each other right now, which is just, it's it's truly the best setup for a relationship. I'm so excited. So Aurea as a main character, I also really, really love her. She's stabby. She's a stabby main character. She is very rough around the edges. She's very tough. She is sarcastic. She's kind of got this like pessimism to her, but I enjoy it because I think she's kind of this realist that she's like, yeah, I'm a human living in a vampire world. Like, 
my life is in danger all the time and I'm angry about it and she's very not trusting of anyone, which is totally understandable. And I just like her. She's funny. She's got like a good sense of humor and she's very rough and um, I'm enjoying her so far. We have met a couple side characters, but I don't know enough about them yet to really talk about them. So I'll see if we get more development from them. I'll include them. But right now I'm in the part of the book where she is participating in the trials and they're very scary and very intense, but she's holding her own. So it's, it's going very well. I think that's it. That's all I have to say for now about this book. As I said, I'm like 100 120 pages in, so I have quite a ways to go because I think it's about a 500 page book, but I'm obsessed. Like I'm, I'm literally so obsessed. I'm sorry if I'm like so annoying about like these fantasy romances that I've been reading lately. But I'm just so excited because I feel like I've read so many like very average fantasy romances this year where I want them to be so amazing and they're just not. They're just like fine or they're like good, but they don't like give me that exciting feeling. So far, Carissa's books have done that. Like they're just a level above what else I've been reading this year. So I'm very excited. Sorry if I'm shoving these down your throat, but also I'm not sorry at all because I just, if you like the same books as me, I really, really do think that you'll like Chris's books as long as this book continues to go the way that I think it will. I mean, I think it's going to be a fave. Today is Tuesday. I am going to probably spend the rest of the day reading and hopefully get much farther into this book. I will check in with you guys when I'm a little bit further and let you know how it's going. Hi besties, it is time for another reading check-in. Yes, I am in my pajamas, but that is because I have spent the day basically cozying up and reading quite a bit of The Serpent and the Wings of Night. It's actually been a couple days since I talked to you last. I have just been busy and I haven't been able to pick this up, but today I have and I am just so excited. I'm so excited by this book. I'm just literally loving every single second of it from the beginning, from the prologue. I was like, yep, this is good. This is, this is gonna be like amazing. And I am have not been proven wrong so far really really enjoying it. I am on page 305. So the book I think is like 500 pages exactly. I do kind of want to try to finish this book today. I am just so curious to see what happens and because it's taken me a few days to pick this book back up again I just feel like no I just gotta like binge the rest of the book and see what happens but everything that has happened so far I've just really really enjoyed. Araya and Rain I think that's how their names are pronounced by the way, I'm not entirely sure. My friend Sam at Sam Reads a Little, I got her to pick this up, so she's reading it as well. And she pronounced the love interest name completely different than me, so now I'm like questioning everything, so I don't know. But I'm just gonna keep saying Rain, because that's what I feel like it is, but she said it might be Ryan, and I'm like, well, that's, now that she said that, now I'm thinking it's Ryan, but <laughs> all that to say, I really, really like Araya and Rain. They had an interesting start to their relationship, and definitely were enemies, obviously, because they are in this like Hunger Games style tournament to the death type of thing, but they have really transformed into allies and are now starting to feel like maybe there might be something more between them. And Araya just kind of keeps reminding herself that I have to kill him at some point. And so it just makes the tension very, very good. And also we've just had a lot of other little like mysteries and plot points just sort of planted as of right now. You know, Araya's dynamic with her dad is interesting. The history with her parentage and what actually happened when she was adopted by him. Rain's history and his life and all of that and the way that the other vampires treat her and it's just like there's a lot of layers to this book and I'm just loving it. I may have already said this and um, if I have I'm sorry but I will repeat it because I think it's so important to repeat it. This book I think really accomplishes having a solid fantasy plot and then a solid romance as well which is always going to be the best version of fantasy romance. I have been disappointed by so many fantasy romances in the past because I just feel like it's one or the other. We have a decent fantasy plot, but the romance is like nothing. Or we have like a decent romance, but the fantasy is just, the, the plot is not there. The world building doesn't make sense. The magic system is all over the place. This I feel like is well-crafted. I really, really appreciate it. And it's keeping me entertained even when we don't have the romantic moments. I'm still invested in Aurea's story and the world and just kind of everything going on. So I love this. I'm obsessed and I'm hopefully going to finish it tonight. So. I will talk to you all tomorrow with my final review. Of Hello besties, long time no talk for me. I think I might have said that in my last vlog update. I am, too much time is going by between these vlog updates because I have just had a week, let me tell you. Work was really crazy this week and then my whole filming schedule, vlogging schedule, everything got thrown off because our power went out on Friday all the way into like Saturday evening, which was lovely. And so I'm kind of all over the place. I'm trying to just like gather my thoughts and I have a lot of 
of updates for you all. Since we last spoke, I finished two books. I have so many book unboxings book mail to open with you guys. So this is probably going to be a long update. I'm going to tell you that right now. So strap in besties. I'm going to do reading updates first, then I'm going to open up the book mail. I also want to go to Barnes and Noble after this and buy Babel by R.F. Kuang. So I'll probably do that. Let's let's just get into it. Okay, so the first book that I finish is of course The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Krista Broadbent. I ended up giving this book five stars. Once again, I loved this book so, so much. I think it's a great first book in a vampire fantasy romance series. The ending was wild. The ending, I'm just like, question mark, you know, like, I don't even know what to think of the ending. It's very, very crazy. And I just had so much fun. This was a really, really fun book. I really liked Krissa's writing style. And I really love Araya and Rain. And I'm very, very happy about how this book turned out and the direction we're going. I feel like it's going to be very fascinating. I also learned that this is going to be the first book in a six book series, but it's going to be three sets of duologies. And each of the duologies are going to follow a different house. So we have the House of Night, House of Blood and House of Shadow, I believe. So it'll follow like different couples. And I think that's going to be like really interesting. So this first duology will be Rain and Araya's story. I did give this book five stars. As I said, I absolutely loved it. It was a great reading experience, but I do still have like a couple of criticisms. There was one like line that Rain, our main character, kept repeating and it was repeated so many times. And I understand why. I understand the impact of that statement and why she had him say it so much, but I was kind of like, Okay, we get it. But once you read the ending, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, like I understand why that was so important and impactful. But I just, something I noticed that I was kind of like, Okay. And then I would say there's a couple of side characters who are very fleshed out. And then there are a couple of side characters who I think could have been fleshed out more to round out the story a little bit better. So I just noticed that inconsistency, but I'm not mad at it. I still had a great time reading this. This was so much fun and 10 out of 10 recommend. So then I decided I wanted a little bit of a palette cleanser. So I have not read a contemporary romance in I think two months since September, which feels very, very long because I was talking to Sam and she was reading The Serpent in the Wings of Night. I asked her about Heartless by Elsie Silver because I've seen a lot of people talking about that book lately. It is the second book in a companion contemporary romance series. It's basically kind of like this country ranch romance series. People call it horse girl smut and after reading it I definitely agree with that assessment. Um, and I wasn't sure if this was going to be a book for me because I'm just not really into like the cowboy ranch thing. It's just not 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 something that I gravitate towards. But every single one of my friends on Goodreads have given this book five stars so far, which I feel like I never see that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it out. I'm just going to see what I think. It'll be a good little palette cleanser, a quick little read. And when my power went out, it was like the perfect book to read on my Kindle. And I have to say, I flew through that book. Oh my God. This book was so good. It was so cute. I was like smiling while reading it. The spice was amazing. I totally recommend this book. So I haven't even said what it's about. So this particular book follows Cade and Willa. Cade is a grumpy single dad and Willa is his nanny. And she's like, it is grumpy sunshine, but not in a way that's like over the top and annoying. One of my favorite things about this book is our main character Cade is grumpy, but he's not like ridiculous and Willa. She is sunshine-y kind of, but she's not like, I, I usually have a problem with the sunshine character in the grumpy sunshine trope because I feel like they don't act like a person or like they don't act like an adult. Like they'll act like a child basically. And I appreciate that Willa was like positive and fiery and very upbeat, but she was also, I think, realistic. And she also pushed back a lot on Cade if he was like being too grumpy or whatever. So I really liked them and their dynamic was so amazing and so cute. And I actually really liked the setting. I liked the rant setting. I thought that was cool. And it's set in Canada, actually. There's also a really nice found family trope in this book. So I am going to go back and read the first book. You don't have to read them in order. I'm going to though, just because I like the other characters and I have met the couple that is going to be in the first book. So I'm going to go back and read that. And then the third book, Powerless, is coming out, I think in February. So excited for that. It follows Jasper and Sloane. And Jasper is kind of like adopted into this family that we're following at the ranch. He's a hockey player and he's very like quiet and brooding. And then Sloane is their cousin and she's a ballet dancer, which is awesome because I did ballet my whole life. So I'm like, yes, so excited for that. And she's actually engaged to someone else right now. So that is going to be an interesting ride and I am very excited for it. So this was a really, really fun palette cleanser in between fantasies. I had so much fun. I finished it so quickly and I'm definitely going to pick up more from Elsie Silver in the future. Okay, so now I have quite a bit of book mail to open. So let's get started with that. I'm just gonna grab things 
and we'll see what I have here. So the first thing, so this is Real by Kennedy Ryan. And Kennedy Ryan, she is a self-published romance author. And this is another book that I feel like almost everyone I'm friends with on Goodreads has given this book five stars. I've heard amazing, amazing things. I love books that feature Hollywood in like any way, like filming or production or just like anything like that. So I believe this is a romance set kind of like in a Hollywood setting and acting and all of that. So I'm very excited to read this. Oh yeah, and the chapter headers are really pretty, like stage lights. So I think this will be a really, really beautiful book, like a romance set in the entertainment industry and I'm excited for it. So definitely wanna to get to this book soon. Okay, next. So this is actually a gift from Nadia at Books and Drafts. I'll have her linked down below. She actually messaged me the other day and she was like, I'm on a book buying ban for myself, but can I send you a book because I'm very curious about it, which was hilarious. And I was like, yes, of course. And I'm so appreciative. Thank you so much, Nadia, for sending me a book. That is so, so sweet. So she sent me House of Beating Wings by Olivia Wildstein. This recently came out and it has amazing reviews. It's an adult fantasy romance. And I think crows are like incorporated into the book. Oh my gosh, this is so so gorgeous. I'm so excited to read this. I am going to try to fit this onto my November TBR and read it this month. So thank you so much, Nadia, for sending me this. I am so, so excited. Okay, and the next two books, I think, go together. I think, I think. So I really, really enjoyed Heartless by Elsie Silver. And I was like, oh, I want to buy the physical copies of this series so far because I'm really liking it. And she actually had like special editions. So this is the first book in this series. It's the Chestnut Springs series. So this is the uh, special edition of Flawless, which is the first book. I think it's Enemy to lovers and oh okay I like the chapter headers too there's like a cow skull I think I don't know but really really pretty I'm super excited to have these on my shelf okay and then this is heartless which is the book that I read a couple days ago oh my god oh yeah it has a guitar for the chapter header very cute I loved this book I could see myself like rereading it for like a comfort read it was just it was amazing so yay so excited to have both of these okay so now I have a bookish item I ordered a couple things off of Etsy so so I really needed a book sleeve because I don't have one and I do bring books with me pretty much everywhere I go and I needed something to protect them. Oh my god, this is so cute. So I got an A Court of Silver Flames themed book sleeve and it says our stories are worth telling, which I believe is a quote from Emery. And yeah, it's super cute. It has the mountains, fat wings, of course, and the cauldron. Yeah, so very, very excited to have this. It's really plushy, so I think it'll protect my books very well. Ooh, okay, so this is from Pango Books. Oh my god, this person wrapped this so nicely. This is next level. Look at this. Look at how beautifully wrapped this is. Oh my god. I bet you're Christmas present wrapping is off the charts. I needed another edition of House of Sky and Breath, which you will see why in a minute. This is like a brand new copy. This is gorgeous. This is a very, very well, well taken care of copy of House of Sky and Breath. I also ordered a copy of House of Earth and Blood off Pango Books. I don't think it's shipped yet though. I needed to buy a copy of each and I'll show you why in a second. So I saw these dust jackets on Etsy for Crescent City and I'm just like into collecting multiple editions of books right now. So I was like, oh, I want to get those because I really, really like this art style. Let's look at House of Red Blood first. Oh my God. They're always, they're always so stunning in person. I mean, they're stunning online too, but then you see them in person and you're like, holy crap. So look at that. So this is House of Red Blood and we have Bryce and Danica. Isn't that so stunning? Oh my goodness. And then that's the reverse. So that looks really amazing. And then this is the House of Sky and Breath dust jacket. So we have Hunt there and then we have Rune and Lydia and then the reverse is just the exact same thing. I'm so excited about this. Oh my god. So then the next thing is another dust jacket. So I'm very excited about this. I feel like a lot of people on booktube have this dust jacket and I decided I wanted to get it. So this is a dust jacket for A Court of Silver Flames and it is done in the art style of the original Akatar covers before they did like the rebrand and made them look more adult. They had um the like image of Feyre like from the neck down on all of the books. So somebody has made one for A Court of Silver Flames so that people who have those editions can kind of have a matching edition or people like me who just like to have multiple copies of their favorite books can also buy it. So, so there is that. There's Nesta on the front and the back. This looks super amazing. So I'm excited to put this on my extra edition of Akasif as well. Okay, so that is the update. Good Lord. So today is Sunday. I have quite a lot to do. I am going to, my cat is eating something. 
Okay, I am gonna go to Barnes because I really want to buy Babel by RF Kuang. I've just heard so many amazing things and the book sounds fantastic. So I wanna buy it, I wanna read it. Gonna try to fit it in to my November TBR as well. And I need to edit my bookshelf tour that I just filmed. That'll definitely be up before this vlog is up. So I have quite the day ahead of me. So I will talk to you all in a little bit when I have another reading update. besties. So it is a couple days later. I think the last time that we talked, I had not told you what I was going to read yet because I don't think I knew what I was going to read yet, but I have picked up a new book. I'm really, really enjoying it. So let me talk about that. And then my plans for the rest of the vlog, I decided to pick up Legend Born by Tracy Dion, particularly because the second book in this series came out yesterday. So a lot of people have been talking about it, really loving it, very excited. And I was like, you know what? It's time. Let me pick up Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I've had this book on my bookshelves for a while and I want to experience it for myself. Can I just say? loving, literally loving this so much. It is exactly what I was wanting right now. I think it's a really, really great YA fantasy. There's also this depth to it with grief and what Brie is going through at the time of the events of everything happening here. And oh, it's just, it's really, really good so far. So I am, let me see, I am on page 164. So I'm about a third of the way done with the book. So this is a YA fantasy. Brie is our main character in the beginning of the novel. We find out that her mother has passed away in a very tragic accident. Obviously, Obviously this shakes Brie to her core and you know is a huge tragedy and loss for her family. Three months later Brie ends up going to this kind of like high school residency program at the University of North Carolina. So high school students can go and take classes and stay on campus and Brie decides to do this with her friend Alice. One because she's interested in the program and then two she wants to kind of like have a fresh start. She wants to leave her small town. Her and her dad also kind of have a strange relationship ever since her mother died. So for Brie it seems like a good decision to go off and you know kind of do this new thing. So while at a party at the University of North Carolina, a demon attack happens. And obviously this is terrifying and really just shocks Brie because she's like, wait, magic is real. What's going on? There's demons, what is happening? She sees these people who seem like they have magic kind of handle this demon situation. And Brie is just thrown for a loop. Through a series of events, Brie finds out that there is a lot more going on on the University of North Carolina college campus. There is a secret society. Brie finds out that she might have some magic herself and she also discovers that there may be some more mysterious circumstances surrounding her mother's death. That is all I will say for the plot. I'm really, really loving this. I connected to the writing right away in the prologue. I was like, yep, I'm really liking this. I really like how Tracy Dion writes. And I really, really like Brie. I like the way that Tracy Dion is, you know, just adding a lot of depth and layers to Brie's character because sometimes in YA fantasies, it can be hit or miss of how deep are we gonna get to know a character? How many layers are they going to have? And Brie is just, I, I just love her. She has these walls up, obviously very guarded due to the pain that she's been through with her mother. And she has this kind of like renewed fight in her once she realizes maybe I can find out more about my mom's death. Maybe there's more here. And she starts to form connections and bonds with the people who are also involved in this like demon hunting situation. And that has been really fun to see. And she's kind of just coming into her own. And I, I really, really like that. I'm enjoying the character arc that she is going through thus far in the book. So this is a hit. I'm loving this. This is exactly what I wanted right now. And I definitely want to continue reading more of this today. It also does kind of remind me a little bit of the mortal instruments I think it's better definitely like in every way it just gives me that kind of like urban fantasy vibe because it's kind of demon hunting in a modern setting so I do kind of like that I think it's fun plan for the rest of the day I am going to read more of this and um, I also want to start one more book which I am going to try to fit into this vlog so I was feeling inspired by all the demon hunting that I was reading about in Legendborn and I was like should I start my House of Earth and Blood reread because it was just like, I don't think Crescent City and this book are similar at all other than like the demon hunting aspect. And I was like, oh yeah, like kind of reminds me of this situation. Or I was imagining the demons the way that I imagined them in that book here in Legendborn. And then I was like, hmm, what if I started my Crescent City reread like today? So 
I'm going to. I'm going to start Crescent City tonight and I'm so, so excited. I think it's been like almost a year since I've read that book. I've never listened to the audiobook, so I'm excited to listen to that. It's the same narrator as the Throne of Glass audiobooks. Her name is Elizabeth Evans and I just love her. I love her voice so much. So I'm really excited for that. I am going to be rereading House of Sky and Breath in December. So I was planning to reread House of Breath and Blood anyway. And I was like, why don't I just hop on the demon hunting train and pick up Crescent City as well. So I'm very excited for that. So I'm kind of going to read Legend of Warren and Crescent City sort of tandem. So I think the plan for today will be, I'm going to read a little bit more of this now. I'm going to go to the gym. And then I think tonight I'm going to start House of Breath and Blood. So that is the update for now. I will probably talk to you guys tomorrow with reading updates, hopefully for this book and House of Earth and Blood. Hi besties. So hello, it is a new day. I have exciting reading updates. I have read more of Legend Born. Still loving it. Really, really loving all of these just little plot lines and threads that are getting revealed and kind of getting started and just loving every second of it. I am so, so curious to see what more is going to be revealed in regards to Brie and her history, her family's history, her power, all of that. I don't want to say too much, but I am so intrigued and I just, I love it. I'm just, this is such a gripping series right from the beginning. And as I keep going, I'm just like eating it all up and I love it so, so much. Also, I just like love the little romance that's happening here. I think it's been done really, really well so far. It's kind of like this slow burn, but it's really sweet and I'm excited to see where it goes. I am going to read more of this today and hopefully finish it tomorrow night. That is the goal, but this is going really, really well so far. I don't have too much of a detailed update because like I'm in the meat of the book and I don't want to say too much, but love it. Just absolutely loving it. Very, very good. So this is exciting. Really happy that this is turning out to be a beauty of a YA fantasy. And I also decided to start Crescent City House of Earth and Blood. I am on page 250 something like that. Yeah, 254. You guys already know. You already know and you've heard it a million times, but obsessed. Beautiful. Just everything, everything. I love this book so much. Also, can I just say, after having read House of Sky and Breath, and now I'm rereading this book, this is an entirely different book now. The amount of foreshadowing is insane. The Autumn King, that's all I'm gonna say, just that. It's so much fun because now there's all these little things that I'm like, well, that obviously leads to what happened here. And this is obviously foreshadowing to that. And it's very, very exciting. But obviously those are things that I did not catch my first two rereads around because I read this book twice before House of Sky and Breath came out. So this is my third time reading it. But the first time that I'm reading it post Hosab, let me tell you, it's an experience. I recommend if you've read Hosab and you haven't reread this yet, I would do it because it's like a whole other experience and it's very, very exciting. I am probably going to read more of this tonight as well. I was reading Legendborn kind of during the day and then this like at night before I went to bed. And I think I'm going to continue on with that though. So this will be kind of like my nighttime bed book. I will be continuing on reading these two beautiful books today and um, I will have more updates for you tomorrow. Hello friends. So it is time to close out this weekly reading vlog. I have finished Legendborn and House of Earth and Blood. I finished them yesterday. And let me just tell you my final thoughts before I close us out. So yesterday I finished Legendborn uh, kind of earlier in the day and I just absolutely loved this book. It's such a solid YA fantasy. The ending was like, insane. I cannot wait to pick up the second book, Bloodmarked. I really, really appreciated the exploration of the magic system and powers and the lore kind of with the King Arthur stuff. I did end up looking it up because it does definitely become a central part of the story. So that was super interesting. There is definitely some tough subject matter that is handled throughout this book. So definitely check out Trigger Warnings. I overall think that this is just a fantastic YA fantasy. I really, really liked Brie as a character. I thought that it was really well paced. This was a really, really solid start to the series for sure. All right. And then last night I finished House of Earth and Blood. This is my third time reading this book and I had a wonderful time per usual. There's something very sad that happens at the end of this book. If you've read it, I'm sure you know. And I cried. I cried once again, even though I knew it was coming. I know how the entire scene plays out. And yeah, I still was 
a blubbering mess. So I really, really love this book. It is a fantastic adult urban fantasy. Definitely one of my faves. So that is it for this week's weekly reading vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I just want to say thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart for watching my videos, subscribing, liking my videos. It means the world to me and I hope you guys know that. I am just so, so grateful for this very tiny little corner of the bookish internet and I'm so thankful for all of you. I love talking to you guys, your comments, your DMs, everything really, really means the world to me. I'm just feeling very, very grateful. And I just want to communicate that to you all because it really, really means a lot. Thank you so much for being here. I also wanted to say if there are any specific videos that you guys would like to see from me, leave them down in the comments below. Is there a certain type of vlog you want me to do? Is there a book series you think I should read and make a video about? Or even just like a sit down video, any book video ideas that you guys have, go ahead and leave them down below. I am always open to suggestions. I would love to hear what you guys would like to see more from me. So that brings us to our emoji of the video. So let's leave the snake emoji to represent the serpent and the wings of night. So if you would like to leave an emoji to let me know you've made it to this point in the video, go ahead and leave the snake emoji down below. As always, my Instagram and my Goodreads are linked down below. You are welcome to follow me on there at any time. I really appreciate that you guys watched this video. I hope that you're having a fantastic day and I will catch you guys in the next one.